Okay then, we're uh, on to question five in the January 2009 BY1 paper. Uh, this uh, this question five is quite a long question. Um, let's scroll down actually and see the, the total number of marks. Um, 15 marks. Um, that is a lot of marks uh, for one question. Um, and this question is all uh, about membrane transport. Okay, uh, different types of membrane transport as well. It's not just one type. Um, so, if you didn't revise your membrane transport um, or you were struggling with it, um, then this question really could cost you your exam. All right, if you uh, if you did really badly in this, you could drop a grade, maybe more. Okay, it depends how you do on the other questions in the paper of course um, but this is a level okay and you need to prepare and revise thoroughly uh, for your exams because like I just said a question like this if you don't know it can cost you uh, cost you a, a few grades okay then um, so part a uh, the examiner uh, is telling you that there is a diagram of an animal cell um, so obviously it's just a, a basic outline of a cell. Okay, uh, what is interesting about it um, is this top region here. Okay, um, the examiner has added in um, a region of high surface area. Okay, whenever you get a, a wiggly line like that, um, it does increase the surface area. Um, of the cell membrane okay um, you know if this, this red line here is a, a flat line uh, underneath it if I then draw a wiggly convoluted line as best I can um, the the wiggly line there has a greater surface area compared to the the straight line okay so this is a cell with a region of um, a high surface area okay um, at the top here, uh, the examiner has written uh, ions. Okay, so uh, we're, we're we're looking really at the movement of ions into uh, the cell. Okay, and then ions out of the cell. Yeah. All right. So it looks like we're going to have to add some uh, answers to this diagram now in a moment. Okay, so part one then, sodium ions diffuse into the cell. They move out of the cell by active transport. Complete the diagram using the words high or low to show the relative concentrations of sodium ions at X, Y and Z. Okay, um, if the uh, sodium ions diffuse into the cell, okay, at point X. Um, for anything to diffuse, the concentration gradient has to be high to low. Okay, so we've got ions outside of the cell and they want to move in. So that must mean their concentration outside of the cell uh, has to be high. All right, so that would be the answer to X. It's a high uh, concentration. Okay, uh, logically then, um, point Y would be a low concentration because diffusion occurs down a concentration gradient from high to low. Okay, right, uh, Z now, uh, this is a little bit more tricky because the question says that the ions move out of the cell by active transport. Okay, now active transport is the transport mechanism that requires ATP. It's energy dependent. And the reason why it's energy dependent is because ions or other substances move against their concentration gradient. Okay, so uh, in, this, in this case now, the answer to Z uh, would be high. Okay, because active transport goes from low concentration which we have at y to z which is the high concentration okay so uh, only one mark for that uh, but again i think uh, pretty straightforward 
uh, answers to that question. Okay, then let's have a look at uh, part two. Right, the uh, uh, the question here is explain how one structural feature of the cell shown helps to ensure a rapid rate uh, of diffusion. Okay, well, there's really only one structural feature really in that cell, and it's one I've already uh, discussed with you. It's this it's this region here where the membrane is highly folded. Okay, um, that would uh, increase the surface area, and that then would actually increase the rate at which uh, substances move across uh, the cell membrane. Okay, so I've said there that the, uh, there are folds in the membrane. Uh, the examiner would have allowed um, microvilli. Okay, um, but the question really is asking you to explain. All right. So I would say now that the answer I've put there, I don't think is quite enough. All right, I've said there are folds in the in the membrane. I think I now need to say that those folds um, increase the surface area of the membrane. There we are. So I've just added uh, that extra bit of information there at the end that uh, it increases the surface area. Okay. Because uh, remember, a, a, an explain command word really asks you to describe uh, and give a reason for. Uh, so my description here is there are folds in the membrane and um, the reason there is they increase the surface area. Okay then, so let's move on to part B1. Um, so it says here uh, there are a number of factors that uh, influence the rate of diffusion. In the table below, circle the letter which shows the combination of factors which give the most rapid rate of diffusion. Okay, so you've got quite a bit of information in this table. Um, if we look at the uh, column headings along the top, um, you've got appearance of membrane there, you've got concentration gradient there, and then we've got thickness of membrane. Now, You've got to find a way, really, to sort of filter out and get into this question. So the way I think is the best way to do it, if, if we just remind ourselves that we're looking at rapid rate of diffusion. So you should know that diffusion occurs from a high concentration to a low concentration. So if we look at the concentration gradient uh, column here, what we can do is that we can forget any row that has a concentration gradient from low to high because diffusion doesn't occur like that all right so instantly now just by knowing that little bit of information about diffusion we can eliminate um, answer B and E okay because they have the wrong concentration gradient okay so uh, it's not B and it's not E um, the other way now that we can uh, tackle this is uh, the thickness of the membrane okay um, it's only thin membranes that allow a rapid rate of diffusion okay so let's have a look at which um, uh, which parts have thin uh, membrane. So B has a thin membrane, but we've excluded that because the concentration gradient is wrong. Okay, uh, so it's not B. Um, e has a thin membrane, but we've excluded that as well because the concentration gradient is wrong. Okay, so B and E still definitely out. Even though they got a thin membrane, they're not going to have a rapid uh, rate of diffusion. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at number C. What we have is a thin membrane and we have a high to low uh, concentration gradient. So that's great. That's that's an option. It could be um, answer C. OK. Um, so the other factor that we need to look at is the appearance of the membrane. Um, so this is a little bit more tricky um, to figure out because you've got uh, five appearances here and 
you need to figure out which appearance has the highest surface area okay now if you look at the first three appearances to me they look identical the last two membrane appearances look identical okay so based on that I can tell you that the first three appearances have a high surface area okay the last two appearances they have a less uh, or a lower uh, surface area okay so the only answer it could be is actually C because C fits all the criteria that allow a rapid rate of diffusion it has a thin membrane it has a high to low concentration gradient thin high to low concentration gradient and it has a high surface area or a large surface area okay so the answer there is actually C all right right part uh, two um, is uh, asking you to refer back now to the diagram in part A and to uh, explain um, how active transport of sodium ions out of the cell helps to ensure a rapid rate of diffusion of sodium ions into the cell so let's um, scroll back up to this uh, diagram okay what we're interested in now is why the movement out of the cell of sodium ions causes a rapid movement of sodium ions into the cell yeah okay all right so what you've got to be thinking of now is what what feature or what factor that affects the rate of uh, diffusion is being influenced by the active transport of sodium ions out of the cell well it's only affecting one one factor and that's the concentration gradient okay what the active transport of sodium ions out of the cell is doing is that it's it's removing the ions from inside the cell to the outside okay that means the concentration of ions inside the cell is low compared to outside the cell at point uh, X so what the active transport of sodium ions is doing is actually increasing the concentration gradient it's uh, it's making it bigger and the uh, the larger the concentration gradient uh, the more rapid um, any any molecule or ion uh, will diffuse okay so that's uh, that's the uh, the the important part of this uh, question the active transport of ions out of the cell is influencing is increasing the concentration gradient and that increases the rate at which ions uh, will diffuse into the cell okay so let's uh, let's type that answer in okay then so uh, the answer I've got for this question is uh, uh, the movement of sodium ions out of the cell would reduce their concentration and create a greater concentra concentration gradient between the inside and outside uh, of the cell so increasing the rate of diffusion into the cell okay uh, quite a long answer there for uh, for one mark uh, but uh, it does uh, fully explain how active transport um, ensures a rapid rate of diffusion of ions into the cell okay um, right part three then uh, we're asked to describe and explain the effect of an increase in temperature uh, on the rate of diffusion okay so yes as you should know temperature does uh, affect the rate of diffusion okay um, higher temperatures will increase the rate of diffusion purely because the higher the temperatures um, the more energy in the form of kinetic energy the molecules will have so when anything gets hotter 
um, they move about more because they have this uh, increased uh, kinetic energy. The more kinetic energy, uh, the faster the molecules will move and therefore um, the rate of diffusion uh, would have increased. There we go then, that's my answer. Uh, higher temperatures increase the kinetic energy of the molecules, causing them to move faster, which results in an increased rate uh, of diffusion. Okay, so uh, the two marks there would be for stating that higher temperatures increase the kinetic energy, and then the second mark for causing them to move faster, which uh, causes an increased rate of diffusion. Right then, part C. Okay, so uh, we've got a graph here, um, and the examiner is telling you the graph shows the relationship between concentration difference uh, across the membrane, okay, and the rate of diffusion um, for diffusion and facilitated diffusion. Okay, so they're looking at two membrane transport processes here. Okay. Okay, then this uh, this graph that's quoted uh, in the question. I just want to uh, uh, show you the notes now from uh, the app. Uh, this is the graph I've uh, drawn in um, in the notes. Um, it's showing uh, the rate of diffusion then when you change the concentration gradient. All right, and it's a straight line. Okay. Um, if we scroll down a couple of pages, I then have. Um, a graph there where we're looking at again the rate of diffusion against concentration gradient but in this case the actual um, uh, line isn't a straight line it actually plateaus off okay so the um, exam question there has actually combined two graphs into one okay and um, you have to identify what Q and P are um, so there it is, part one, identify the, the two lines. Uh, so as you can see, P is a straight line, uh, which means the rate of diffusion is directly proportional uh, to the concentration difference across the membrane. All right, so that's got to be diffusion. Okay, so P is diffusion. Okay, and Q then is actually facilitated diffusion because you get this plateauing off um, along uh, the top here so that plateau is um, a good indication there that you have uh, facilitated diffusion uh, occurring okay okay so there's the answers in for part one and that's uh, uh, easy one marks I hope okay then so using the graph and your knowledge of membrane structure explain the difference uh, between P and Q Okay, so uh, the differences now between um, lines P and Q um, on the graph. So if we scroll back up, um, as we can see, the, uh, the differences are that uh, with diffusion, the line uh, is directly proportional, which means the rate is directly proportional to the concentration gradient and P, uh, with Q sorry the, uh, the the line plateaus off uh, so there isn't always a uh, directly proportional relationship for uh, facilitated diffusion so um, the membrane structure that can account or can explain the differences between P and Q is purely and simply to do with the presence of um, membrane proteins. Okay, if you remember, membrane proteins um, are within the cell membrane and they aid the passage um, of polar molecules uh, or ionic molecules like ions uh, across the membrane. So uh, if we scroll back up to the graph, with a simple or normal diffusion there, line P, that doesn't rely on any membrane protein, okay? But facilitated diffusion does rely on um, a, a, a membrane protein, such as a channel or carrier protein. 
Okay, so uh, with Q, the the actual rate of diffusion um, is dependent upon the protein molecule within the membrane. Okay, so uh, along the first part of the the graph here for Q, um, if you um, relate that to P, you can see that the gradient of Q, uh, where the, the, the red bracket is, is a lot steeper than that of P. All right, so whenever you have a steeper line uh, on a graph here, um, it actually indicates uh, a greater rate of diffusion. Okay, so that greater rate of diffusion uh, initially for Q is a consequence of those membrane proteins. They are aiding uh, the movement um, of the substance across the membrane. Okay, so that's that's a one uh, difference between facilitated uh, diffusion and simple diffusion based on the presence of carrier proteins. Um, initially, when the concentration uh, gradient is uh, quite low, the rate of diffusion via facilitated diffusion is higher than that by simple uh, diffusion. If I just uh, draw the bracket in in blue, um, this is the equivalent rate uh, for the uh, simple diffusion. Okay, the gradient there is a lot shallower than that of uh, Q. Okay. Um, the other uh, feature here is this plateauing um, that occurs only with facilitated diffusion uh, in this instance. So that brown bracket along the top uh, is highlighting the plateauing effect that occurs when you have saturation of the uh, membrane proteins. OK, so that that plateau line there um, represents a constant rate of diffusion. Uh, diffusion hasn't stopped. Um, it's still occurring. But because the membrane proteins are completely saturated with the molecule that's being transported, um, the, the rate of uh, diffusion does not change. It remains constant. OK, remember, as I've said in my notes, that uh, there's only a limited number of membrane proteins uh, embedded in the membrane. And when the concentration of substances exceeds the number of membrane proteins, you get this saturation effect occurring. OK. Right. Um, so we can actually type uh, those uh, responses now into... Uh, uh, part two. Okay then, so I just typed in uh, two answers there to get the two marks. I've said facilitated diffusion causes more rapid movement of molecules uh, through the membrane. Okay, if I just scroll up again to the graph, remember that's relating uh, really to uh, quite low concentration uh, gradients there. OK, so uh, remember the steepness of the gradient uh, gives an indication of the rate. OK. Um, and secondly, I've said the rate of facilitated diffusion is limited by the number of proteins. OK, remember when the concentration uh, gradient becomes quite high. So anything beyond that black line, the concentration gradient is so high that the membrane proteins are saturated and you get this flattening or plateauing off of the uh, the graph. OK, um, Okay. there are a number of other responses we could have put in uh, to that answer. Uh, you'll see those uh, at the end when we uh, look at the mark scheme. OK, then, moving on to part D. Um, this is asking you now to define the term water potential. Now, um, uh, there's a pretty big section on osmosis and water potential in the uh, notes on the app. Uh, but I have defined water potential uh, in the app for you. OK, and, it, and it's quite simply the, the ability or capacity of water to leave a system 
um, and when I say a system I mean uh, a cell okay so it's just a measure of the uh, uh, ability or capacity of water to leave or indeed enter a, a cell all right okay so there's the uh, the answer to part d then water potential is the capacity of water to leave uh, or enter a cell okay then so uh, as you can see the uh, the question has now jumped to uh, osmosis um, we were previously looking at active transport diffusion and facilitated diffusion okay um, so part e then um, a turgid plant cell was placed in a concentrated solution of sucrose the diagram shows the appearance of the cell after one hour all right so uh, you should know what turgid means okay turgid um, is when a plant cell has actually gained water by osmosis uh, the cell becomes uh, quite rigid okay um, you should be able to tell me uh, the name given to a concentrated sucrose solution okay that uh, that would be a hypertonic solution anything hyper means high uh, so if you've got a, a, a concentrated solution of sucrose it, it would mean it's hypertonic okay right so uh, we'll come to that diagram now in a moment but part one uh, it's asking us to label structures J and K on the diagram okay so this this is a pretty uh, basic diagram really um, it is of a uh, plant cell okay and um, K would actually be the cell wall okay the cell wall there has been drawn uh, as, a, as a thick double layer all right so uh, that would be the uh, cell wall and uh, J uh, would actually be the cell membrane okay and uh, we'll explain what's happening with that cell membrane uh, in a moment okay right part two uh, what evidence on the diagram shows that the water potential of the cell sap must be higher or less negative than that of the sucrose uh, solution okay so uh, remember now um, if you have a higher water potential okay the water potential value as uh, stated in the question here is less negative so remember any value that's less negative is actually closer to zero on the water potential scale um, of course a water potential of zero is the highest water potential okay so any negative value closer to zero will be a higher water potential okay uh, so they're asking you now what evidence shows that the water potential of the cell sap is higher than that of the sucrose solution well what's happening with that cell what evidence is there in the cell to state that inside the cell uh, there is so inside here you have a higher water potential and remember that's the symbol uh, for water potential so you've got a high water potential inside compared to uh, outside uh, the evidence is to do with the cell membrane okay uh, remember that uh, for osmosis to occur you have to have a water potential gradient where water moves from high water potential to a lower water potential okay so water has actually left uh, this cell by uh, osmosis so water's left um, and it's done that because there's a water potential gradient there's a higher water potential inside the cell compared to outside so whenever you get water leaving a plant cell the cell membrane pulls away from the cell wall all right and that's the key indicator now that water has been lost from this cell okay right let's uh, jot that answer in okay uh, so that's the answer there um, the examiner would have allowed um, plasmalized okay the cell has become plasmalized 
uh, I've decided to go there for the cell membrane being pulled away from the cell wall. Uh, but that cell is actually plasmalized. So whenever water leaves a, a plant cell by osmosis, it becomes plasmalized. Right, last question then, part three. Use your knowledge of a property of structure K to explain why the water potential at T must be equal to that at S. Okay, so K of course is the, the cell wall and we're now interested in uh, S here and T. So the examiner wants to know why um, the water potentials are actually equal at those points and he says it's got to be something to do with structure K which is the cell wall okay um, so the cell wall as you should know is made up of cellulose okay and the cell wall is actually fully permeable all right um, that is a different property to the cell membrane the cell membrane is semi permeable okay now in order to get um, osmosis occurring you do need uh, a semi permeable membrane okay so why is the water potentials the same um, at S and T well it's purely and simply because um, the cell wall is not restricting movement at all um, of uh, sucrose okay so um, there will be equal concentrations of sucrose um, across the cell wall. If you have equal um, concentrations of sucrose, okay, um, you must have equal uh, water potentials, okay. Right, so there's my answer. I've said that the cell wall is fully permeable. Uh, sucrose will diffuse into region T from region S resulting in an equal concentration of sucrose on both sides uh, of the cell wall. So if you've got equal concentrations of sucrose, um, you actually have uh, an equal uh, water potential. Okay. Um, right, so that's the end uh, of this question. If we have uh, a quick look at uh, the mark scheme then. So there's uh, question five. All right. Uh, part A, I think, is all uh, pretty straightforward. Um, just to highlight, um, for A, part 2, uh, talking about the feature um, in the cell, uh, the examiner would have allowed microvilli. Okay, microvilli are uh, uh, small projections uh, from the surface of cells that increase their surface area. Okay, uh, part B then. Okay, if you just have a look at those um, marking points, I don't think there's anything in part B that I haven't uh, mentioned. Okay, and uh, part C then, uh, looking at what P and Q is, it's diffusion there for P, facilitated diffusion for Q. All right, and uh, part two then, um, I did say that there were other options that you could have put in for that question. So if you want to just quickly look at that set of marking points. Um, I think in my answer I mentioned that one. Okay, and um, that one there. I said the rate is limited by the number of proteins in the membrane. Okay, uh, but uh, hopefully the other marking points there uh, should be straightforward for you as well. Okay, then part D, water potential is the capacity of water to leave or enter a cell. And part E, okay, which uh, I also think is uh, pretty straightforward um, as well. Okay, that was a, a pretty long question there. Um, I hope um, my comments on uh, the, this question helped you.